During this video we're going to take our first look at creating some reports in Power BI Desktop. In a previous video we connected data from Azure which was vibration sensor data and also some data from a light sensor. And you can see here the table and I have that connection now to Azure Blob Storage and I can click on refresh at any time to get that data. So what we want to do now is to, to build up a, a report that we can uh, later day upload to Power BI on the cloud and generate an application so we can distribute this. And to generate a report, you can see here, we're going to report view and we have nothing on, on our report at the moment. So the first thing I like to do just to make my visuals pop out is change this background colour. So when you've got this selected, if you click on this format the report page, there's a few things I, I like to do. If we go to wallpaper, we'll change that to a, a dark blue, and then the canvas background we'll do the same colour. And then I, I I don't like to use the these filter panes here. And I like to put the filters into my project, so I'm going to hide this filter pane just something that I do you can have them there if you want it just makes the report look tidier um, you have options to edit your filter pane if you're going to have it on here um, so you can change the color and everything else I'll just um, probably show show you that so that's the text the background so this is for the filter pane here change the color go to top loop but I'm not visualizing it anyway I've got the little hidden button the first thing we want to have a look at is, is adding a trend. So if I come back here, you can see here on the right hand side, I have my visuals. The one we're going to use today is a time series line chart. There are some ones where you can shade under the, the line. I particularly don't like those, but the way it works is very similar. So if we click on our line chart, we now have the tile or the widget, whatever you want it to be called, highlighted, and then we can start adding our data. And it automatically pulls the data in from our query that we've built previously. So the first thing we need to do is we need an x-axis for our trend. So that is normally your process UTC time. So we'll put that in here. And then we don't want it to split it out here. We just want the time, so we'll change this and then we're going to start looking at process values that we want to trend you have two y-axis you can see here y and then the secondary y-axis but it's up to you how busy you want to to make this trend but we've got an accelerometer with three axes so we'll bring in x the y Z average, just put in the wrong one there, so I'll take that back and average. And that's just the, the name you can see here. Look that it's done the sum. And what we need to do is go in and change that to average. And now we, we have our trend, and that's how easy it is. We're going to tidy this up a little bit. So let's start with the, the appearance. Uh, and the names, so you can see here, this is quite um, wordy, so we can double click and change this name. So now you can see my data. What I actually did is I had the vibration sensor of very little or no vibration, but because the way it, it works, it's a three axial, I actually picked it up, I remember it was last night or this morning, and I just flipped it round. To, to get the, the values moving and I must have knocked it again after that. Uh, what we'll do is, as we get going, we'll put this actually onto uh, something to create some vibration at a later date. Uh, on the secondary axis, I'm, I'm going to leave that for now, but you could put a value on there. We want to start editing the appearance of, of this trend. So the first thing to do here is go format your visual. General is for any type of tile or uh, visual that you have that you want to edit and then this one visual is specific to this type of trend 
let's have a look here how we can tidy this up now the first thing that I always do is put the zoom slices on just on the on the axis and then little one that I don't like is the size of these lines they're quite thick so I knock those down to one put some nice thin lines on there now you can change the colours, some of the other things you can mess around with here. You can put the markers on. I don't like those, so I keep them turned off. And then you've got options here with data labels. You can put these on and you can see the process values. Again, I don't like that because you've got the, the um, info uh, help that pops up. Series labels, puts the name at the end. But again, we've got them up here and they're colour coded. It's just taking up space. It's okay here when we've got one axis, but when we've got two, um, that becomes a, a bit busy. Uh, it's up to you. I'll keep those turned off. And then the plot area background, you've got the option to add an image um, or put some colors on there and transparency. So we'll put this image on there just to show you, then I'll remove it. So it's not something I like doing, so I tend to leave that. So some other things that we need to do is change these labels. So we can see here X axis. So we go to X and Y axis. So we go to the Y axis. You've got the title. It says auto. It's vibration in millimeters per second. And you can see now it's changed that. And this down, down here is time in UTC. And then the only other thing we need to do is change the title. Now you can change that within here, but it's also under general. So if I go to title, I can see here, there's my title and we can just put whatever title you want on there. And then you can position it and change the, the text size and the color and do anything you want. Something I tend to, to do is go to effects and just round off the corners here. So if you have a look at the border, turn that on, set that to a radius of 10, just finishes it off a little bit nicer. You can see here now the, the radius on there. And then it's really limiting the options on, on this. So if I go to here, I'll have plenty of options. I don't really want the end user to have. So this filter, for instance, but if you go to settings and your general, you'll see here header icon. So you can turn them all off. But I still want the option to focus so you can have the you know the trend on just one page. But if you come down to icons, you can see all of this stuff that you can turn on and off. So somewhere on here I want to keep focus mode and I will turn the rest of these off. That's pretty much finished for the trend you can drag and drop if I click on it again I can put more information on here we're going to to come on to you know the help that you can apply but the first thing we need to put on here is a filter for the time and date uh, and it's worth having that on almost any report that you do so you're not always loading up three months worth of data and that's done with something called a slicer so click off the the graph select slicer and you can see it's come down here and then add a field so we'll use event process utc time and it's brought that in now again i can play around with the look and feel of this so i'll have appearance i'm going to go to slicer header i'm going to turn that off and then under the slider, I want that the same color as my background. So you can see here now that's, that's changed. And then I'm going to go to general, do the same as what I've done on my other one, set a border and give that a radius of 10. And then just give it a title. So I clicked off by mistake. So if I go to general title select date range and you can make that as big or as small as you want it's entirely up to you 
so that's now got a filter but I can see here I don't want to this to have access to any of my header icons so if I go to my settings again for this one and then general header icons I'm just going to turn them all off so don't forget to save and when we publish that these will will disappear when we publish these as an app what we want to do now is change this info display so it shows my min and maximum values for for each one of my axes so I need to generate my own info tab and that's what I'm going to show you how to do next to tidy this this trend up so we're back at our report what you need to do to create your own info tab is add a new page you can call this whatever you want so I'm going to call this chart info and then when you come up to your page settings you'll have an option that says page information and canvas settings and there's an option here that says tooltip so we're going to set that as tooltip but so we don't have this tab just appearing by itself if you right click the tab you have the option to hide this page from the report don't worry about it not being able to see it anywhere else because we've got to link it to the graph in a minute so you you can now build up this this info tab and you can do it really any way you want so if we we'll do it by putting a table in here and then we will add the columns so I've decided not to use the table. I'm using the multiple row card here. So this is the one I've used. So I've set up my values that I want to see for my X axis, Y axis, and I've copied here this one. So I need to just quickly go in and edit this. So I'm going to show you what I've done. So we'll add in the Z axis values and we'll tidy up the sums and the text. So we want it to have the same text. Unfortunately, it pulls in the name and the type of summation you've got. Uh, so sum of average. So we want this to be Z A V E. And then I want to change the, the summation to average. And then this one will be max, Z max maximum. I'm thinking you can see the pattern now, so I'll just finish these off. So now I have my process values, so when I hover over the line, it will show me these values for that moment in time on the chart. I can add some bits and pieces to this. Now, one of the nice things about using Power BI Desktop is I can add images. So if I do insert, there's a couple of things here. I can insert an image. So I'll find my robot image here, and I'll put this in size this up so it brings everything back it's quite big and then we just need to give it a title so again we can insert a text box I appreciate that was painful to watch. I'm probably going to edit it so you don't see how tricky that was to do because I had too much in such a small space. So now I'm going to just line everything up. I've done my tool tip, so we'll keep that safe. Now we can go back to the graph. Don't forget you need to hide this. So when we go back to the graph, we got this, this here. We can now go select the graph. Go to our settings, and I think it's under general. You'll have tooltips on, and then you've got type report page. And we can select our tooltip page that we've just done, which is chart info. Let's just do a save on that, and then let's have a look at what it looks like. So there we go. There's our tooltip on the graph, so we can see the, the min, max, and everything else, and our, our little... Um, robot character on the screen so that's how you you tidy up the trend with more useful information because if you if you
if you just leave it by default it will just do the values you've got on the trend but you might want to put a little bit more information on the tooltip like you can see here our min max and standard deviation values so I'm hoping that when we start coming to, to here look you can see our standard deviation values have shot up and we can start putting alarms on that or conditional formatting and we'll look at doing that in another video so there you have it the trend view quite easy to use to to do the basics on but we've shown you something a little bit more advanced with the tooltip bringing in some additional information and we've also added the slicer or the filter for the date at the bottom so I hope you found that useful. As per usual, please share this channel with your friends and colleagues. But for now, thanks for listening and hope to see you again soon.